because you've got to admit, outfits with chainmail are more interesting. Every single time the Met Gala is upon us, those of us who are not lucky enough to be in Anna Wintour's good books will be partaking in an age-old tradition, staying at home in our pyjamas and commenting on everybody's outfits. Are people sticking to the theme? Which man is going to dare show up in a plain old vanilla black and white suit? And for me, a personal one, who is going to turn up in a suit of armour or with a sword? I thought I'd go through previous editions of the Met Gala and seek out the armour-wearing celebrities for a bit of a guess about the outfit's historical influences amongst the Met Museum's own arms and armour collection. And yes, let's be honest, a little bit of gentle, light judging. So grab your traditional Met Gala drink. For me, that is a coffee because if you're a European, you have to stay up until an ungodly hour to be in the know about the freshest fashion masterpieces or disasters that hit the red carpet. <laughs> let's have an armorial fashionista moment and let's judge some obscenely fancy outfits. Are you wearing the, sh the Chanel boots? Yeah, I am. Let's talk about the look that people have tagged me in the most. You guessed it, it's Grimes with a sword for the 2021 Met Gala whose theme was American Independence, a mirroring the exhibition in America, a lexicon of fashion. Can we just take a moment to admire this absolutely stunning Iris Van Herpen custom gown, which is, to quote Vogue, inspired by distant futures, and which Van Herpen spent over 900 hours perfecting. Swooshy, curvy and extended lightning bolt shapes made from mirror finished liquid silicone were individually hand cast and arranged in a 3D laser cut labyrinth onto a nude illusion bodice that melts into 26 meters of gradient dyed hand pleated silk. I mean, Chef's kiss. Eris Hopin is a fashion designer who merges couture with tech and it leads to these absolutely surreal and beautiful futuristic organic designs. This is very reminiscent for me of armour decorating, reminds me in particular of armour that reproduces fashion and fabric, uh, specifically the fabric cuts of the outfits of the Langschneck. These little crescent-like cuts are like this model at the Met. For me there's something quite nice about you know, metal trying to imitate fabric and then with the Iris Van Herpen fabric kind of blending into that sense of futuristic metal. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but... I've connected them. In spirit of extensive accessorizing, Grimes paired this with a silver mask. Elf ears, uh, I think, and also, of course, a sword. So apparently Grimes took direct inspiration from a 15th century sword that is in the Met collection, but my guess would be a cross between a one-handed medieval arming sword uh, with that kind of distinctive pommel and blade shape and hilt and the Cinque Dea, which is called like that because of its very broad blade which is a five fingers wide but the Cinque Dea would be a lot shorter and squatter and is technically classified as a dagger. According to Grimes quote Vogue again the sword is also cast from a Colt AR 15A3. She says it's from these people who are getting people's guns who don't want to have their automatic rifles anymore and are melting them down and making them perfect replicas of medieval swords. But there's also been more fanciful language from her outside the Vogue article around the sword being made from fermented guns. And I'll be honest, I still have no idea what that means, Grimes. Uh, I don't think anybody knows what that means. I'm just imagining a bunch of guns like in a pickling jar and that's definitely not what you mean. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Do I love the outfit? Absolutely. <laughs> Despite the fact it is absolutely off theme, I mean, it, I, I don't really know how this streams American fashion, but also, you know, I, I do commend her for coming up with something original that wasn't just like denim or, you know, God forbid, red, white and blue. So props to that. And also, you know, if you, if you deliver with a really good inventive outfit, I think you can be excused from the theme. That's my, my controversial opinion. I'd rather see something good and off theme at the Met Gala than tacky and on theme. Oh god, it's Anna Wintour coming to get me. Possibly controversial opinion though. Uh, I just don't feel like the sword is right for this outfit. I love that there's a sword. I wish everybody had a sword at the Met Gala. Uh, I just don't feel as though the organic flowiness of the dress uh, could have been paired beautifully with a silver sweat hilt rapier, for example, which embodies that sense of organic flow in the hilt and would have made for a more elegant pairing. I want I want to be like a sword accessorizing consultant for Silas. Is that a job? Can I make that my job? But now we step back a few years and we go all the way back to 2016. What a throwback. 
<laughs> where Zayn Malik showed up on the red carpet for the Met Gala, whose theme was Man Ex Machina, aka the convergence of man and machine, in a traditional black and white suit, which in the language of pyjama clad Met Gala watchers, usually de facto uh, removes points for the uh, boring factor. But Zayn did at least propose a twist on his black and white outfit with metal arm pieces by Versace. And I mean, more specifically, the rem brace. So that's the kind of upper arm area, the van brace, which is the, which is a kind of forearm area, and then the gauntlet, which is glove hand area. And then there's that little connecting piece at the elbows, which is the, is somebody messaging to tell me? No, they're not. That would have been too good to be true and also a bit creepy. Counter, it's a counter, uh, the kind of, elbow connector thing. So we do have to give him points for accessorizing with his date, Gigi Hadid, who wore a metallic grey dress with armor-like finger plates, things, rings. And I think the intent behind Zayn's outfit was perhaps a cross between knightly and robot, given that the theme, you know, was the convergence of man and machine, which is pretty interesting, in theory. In in theory. For me, this outfit is pretty much a seven in terms of concept, but a four in terms of execution, because I feel like in terms of integration of armor onto everyday clothes, you can do a lot more. And here it looks like it was just kind of tacked on at the last minute. And it's just a little bit much, just in terms of the overall silhouette. Like it looks a bit bulky and top heavy. I think a metallic gray suit that's slightly more fitted to enhance the arm pieces would have worked really well and I'd love to see just a little bit more burnishing and weathering and matte textures on the arm pieces themselves to make it feel a bit less kind of cheap and right out of the bag if that makes sense. Something about the extreme shininess of it all is just not working for me but it's so close to working it's just a few points short of working properly. <laughs> Uh, another option, only have one arm with the armour piece and have the other covered by a kind of snazzy little metallic cape to emulate this, the type of armour used in Joust, like this one in the Met collection. I feel like this could have just added more flair and kept things interesting with some asymmetry. You know what, I'll just add a few points just for boldness alone and for sticking to the theme somewhat. But yeah, I mean, to be fair, when you look at that 2016 Met Gala, <sighs> It's not just the men that were turning up in in stuff that was slightly uninspired. I found it a bit boring because the theme is quite literally, you know, the convergence of man was machine. Uh, so the most kind of cyberpunk tech fashion dream you can think of. And yet uh, most people turned up in the aforementioned black and white suit, in futuristic white or in metallics because, you know, robots, the future. So metallics, chrome. Groundbreaking. But. Amongst the sea of metallic dresses, one stood out in particular that I did want to touch upon because I just found it very interesting and a good contender for armorial fashion inspiration was Jordan Dunn wearing a silver bombing gown as soon as I saw it. And it's not even funny, it was really as soon as I saw it. I knew exactly what piece of armour in a Met collection it reminded me of because I just have my faves on heavy rotation apparently. And it is this one with this kind of really beautiful sense again of imitating a fashion at the time with this kind of artful structuring and geometric motifs which you know in the original armor uh, emulated these fluted designs that were really popular at the time in german fashion but i've connected them what i enjoy about this piece is also contextually quite open for interpretation you know it can borrow from the iconic robot from metropolis and as well as the suit of armor and i would just love to see more of that general kind of futuristic medieval vibes run around in general, which is kind of like Nimona style. I don't know if you've seen Nimona, but you should. But it kind of took that idea of medieval knights, the medieval knight aesthetic, but in a kind of science fiction futuristic setting, and it works so well. It's that kind of metallic chrome, like, and also like heavy kind of geometric structuring motif that kind of brings it together. Which brings us back to 2021, because let's embrace a complete lack of any structure or chronology in this video, it was a slightly more successful and committed take on armour by Versace in the men's fashion section uh, with Lil Nas X's gold armour look. In fact, a three-parter look, so he starts off with this kind of light, this kind of white and gold kind of massive cape that takes up almost the entire red carpet, has it removed, so obviously that's very kind of like royalty, you know, you have different attendants helping you remove the cape 
we discover this incredible like gleaming full set of armor and then that in itself is removed to reveal this kind of much more kind of form-fitting um on skin tight bedazzled bodysuits underneath just like it was it was a moment it was a look it was everything you had to be there and by be there i mean gawking at it on your phone at an ungodly hour as you sip coffee now i actually covered this look before at the time on my channel in a video all about the concept of golden armor and how you obtain that gilded look um, because of the process involving mercury that can lead to adorning a suit of armor with a black bluish tint or indeed a vibrant gold of which again there are many examples in the Met's arsenal this gold armor here so you can watch more about the process behind giving a historical armor this iconic gold look in my video after you finish being catty about Met Gala outfits here was me of course but yeah it's Met Gala counterpart is most definitely this a snazzy little suit of armor I think I've said snazzy several times this video I have no idea where that comes from snazzy like who's who says that who says that anymore? So obviously strong historic precedent for gold and there's also a really nice little touch of mecha anime cosplay extravaganza there as well. Uh, yes, it does look overly shiny and it is Versace. Like they've done Zayn Malik's armor pieces. So it is very in your face, but I, I don't know. There's just something about how Lil Nas X does it, which really sells it. And I think it's it being a kind of full body armor instead of being kind of grafted on to a much more traditional black suit. In some ways we could say that Zayn dipped his toe in 2016 so that Lil Nas X could sprint in uh, full armor regalia in 2021, but also by then most men have refreshingly started to get the memo about not just turning up in a black suit. And you know, we are experiencing a bit of a cultural turn, at least in couture and fashion about men being allowed to be a bit more bold and experimental and colourful in what they are allowed to wear, at least, you know, in these types of fashion events, which is great. But what I think this outfit set really encapsulates is the idea of ceremony around wearing armour and the context in which this kind of really kind of elaborate armour would have been worn. A statement around pageantry and masculinity that is well suited to this kind of gleaming suit of armor but also the dramatic cape on top of it and the kind of glittering bedazzled bodysuit underneath it which you know for me speaks a lot to the language of armor in a way in which it is kind of very elaborately covered in these kind of patterns and etching and kind of 3d elements so much of the very elaborate crafted armor we have today including in the met collection is armor fit for the nobility and royalty and often used in displays of overt power and opulence like you know it's gifted as a diplomatic gift or it's shown in jams where the whole point is to show like how like fancy and cool and powerful you are with your like your awesome snazzy suit of armor Uplands. you own everything and Lil Nas X taking this language and using it in the context of the Met Gala does make a strong statement to me about that kind of language of power and mingling it with that sense of kind of expressing queer masculinity and it's just a neat little performance piece in itself which I really really enjoy. So overall bonus points for presentation. But now we slip into silver with this Ralph Lauren outfit worn by Shailene Woodley at the iconic Met Gala of 2018. His theme was Heavenly Bodies, Fashion and the Catholic Imagination. Like I mean that Met Gala ball is probably probably my favourite because just so many of the looks were so like spectacular and it's just so camp and so kind of intricate and maximalist and that is exactly the vibe I want from a Met Gala. I don't want I don't want boring restraint. I want, you know, uplands. But quite a few looks at that particular Met Gala Schindig were definitely inspired by a certain sword wielding saint called Joan of Arc, including Shailene's. And what I love about this look is just the inherent neatness of the structure that so clearly plays with the structure of plate armour. Uh, but then proposes a twist with the fact that it's a mini dress and plays it off with some thigh highs and then some kind of soft white frills with the cuffs. There's something missing though and I'm not quite sure what. I love the integration of the shoulder and arm parts flowing into the breastplate and into the tacits though which is tacits of the hip plate armour parts that yeah that are often just like really compelling I think in terms of trying to think about like structuring an up around armor that gives you that kind of incredible like cinch like breastplate the cinched waist and then you have that kind of 
flaring out again with uh, the tassets, which, you know, it's just, it's a look. It looks great. You can't go wrong with tassets. And now we have pigeons. I, you know, everybody wants to judge the Met Gala. And I was trying to find, you know, a specific kind of suit that could correspond, but I think there's just like a few in the Met Gala collection that are, you know, that maybe are reminiscent of that, that uh, terms that kind of very severe structuring. The pigeon agrees. I also really like the kind of the little detail. These seams are quite intentional, and then you have the little grommets, and it's all like, it's really beautifully constructed. I will say the fabric looks quite rigid, and it's not really helped by the pose that she strikes in, like, this outfit. Like, most of the time you're really seeing her standing, like, really, like, straight. So I don't know how comfortable it feels. I'm not entirely sure about the boots, to be honest. I, I just kind of wonder what it would look like with tights and then some silver shoes, just to balance it out but it, you know it also looks pretty badass and also like corresponds well with kind of really severe like styling it kind of conveys that kind of tough as tough as nails video game mini boss i don't play bayonetta but for me this feels very bayonetta and i, I can't explain it. maybe people who actually play bayonetta can tell me if i'm right or not but i'm very glad that we have given this particular outfit some love and flowers first uh, because certain outfits in the same Joan of Arc inspired category, completely overshadowed not only this one, but many other outfits uh, that night at the 2018 Met Gala Heavenly Bodies Ball, because it has become an all-time Met Gala favourite. I'm talking, of course, about Zendaya's Versace armor dress. The one, the only, the queen, the icon. Like, I feel like every single sword sapphic you talk to, they're gonna have this on their mood board somehow. It's inspired so many recreations, it's prompted so much amazing fan art. I think it also inspires a book, Believe So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole, it came out recently um, and I really need to read that book because it looks fantastic. Uh, a lot around kind of warrior women and dragons and it looks great and it is apparently inspired uh, by Joan of Arc's story in some ways. The author may have talked about the fact that she was very heavily inspired by Dendea's Versace gown armor dress moment. And I think it's completely safe that, to say that it remains a definite favorite. Uh, not just because of the outfit itself, but the way in which Zendaya really like sells it. She's got that obviously iconic auburn bob as well, which you know just looks great. Now, in terms of armor, what I find interesting about it is that it is taking some key components of what makes plate armor recognizable to us, but it's making the very good decision which makes it stand out somehow from other outfits on this list of not making it feel too compact. So, you know, it's taking the gorget around the neck, it's taking the, the pauldrons so or the shoulder pieces, uh, the rear brace, plating on the side of the upper arms, and the tassets flowing down from the waist down to mid thighs. All that is offset by this kind of flowing chainmail like material in the skirt and in a draped top underneath. And it creates that kind of game of contrast that works well in terms of just imagining it kind of flowing and moving in a very elegant way. It is a dress where you feel as though you can effectively move around in it and kind of swing a sword around in it and I think that is also what has inspired uh, so many people. Now in terms of inspiration I would say that this armor dress look is more so inspired by all the representations of Joan of Arc. Some representations will have her in a full suit of armor because the point of Joan of Arc is that she is meant to be in an outfit that is that of you know, a man would have worn in battle. That is what prompted her trial and persecution in the first place. Um, that absolute refusal to give up on her identity and what prompted many interpretations of her as not only queer and gender non-forming figure but also potentially a trans uh, figure. But the other reality around that is that there have been countless representations of Joan of Arc and many of them do seek to play with that idea of showing her as this figure that is androgynous in kind of various visual ways. So she'll be in full suit of armor, then she'll have long flowing hair, or she will have the top half of her outfit being very armorial, and then she will effectively have what you could only describe as a kind of like long skirt. I was to find a suit of armor or an armor component in a Met collection that was correspond to this outfit, I'd probably go with this armored skirt because while we don't necessarily directly find references to it in 
Zendaya's outfit, it kind of embraces that sense of the skirt integrated into a suit of armour, which definitely sparked a lot of imagination and inspiration for people trying to imagine warrior women <laughs> in these outfits. These armoured skirts would have been worn in traditional suits of armour worn by men. There was nothing remotely gendered about it. It definitely kind of prompted lots of questions around the idea and the vibe of a kind of dress-like suit of armour. Because I think what really sells this is this kind of heavy reliance on uh, not just the kind of specific components of armour, but also really delving deeply into our iconography around Joan of Arc. Um, and so when you get that sense of the cropped hair and that kind of, um, you know, sense of the dress and the armour elements and that sense of kind of gender confusion and ambiguity with something that is between what we perceive as quite kind of masculine and warrior-like and what is quite feminine and flowy, uh, it does bring all these different feelings to the surface and it makes it a kind of cultural reflection on how we consider warrior women. And I think <laughs> this outfit just like really tapped into that in such a beautiful and unique way that just makes it so enduring in our imagination and has no doubt inspired countless other people uh, to, you know, uh, just embrace that vibe in their everyday life. It is a 10 out of 10 outfit, but to make it 12 out of 10 outfit, it's like, where's the sword? Where's the sword in there? Do not forget to subscribe if you like this video, we're almost at 500 subscribers and I would love to celebrate that milestone. And yeah, also let me know if you think that I've missed any uh, Met Gala armor inspired outfits for me to review in a future video, or if um, there is a Met Gala look you would love for me to pair with a sword, uh, because I would, I'd love to do that. But in the meantime, stay safe sword lovers and see you in another video.